Okay, um, this is a very important moment, a very important moment. Um, we are about to um, build, build the foundation for everything we're going to do in all of these videos by looking at a, a, a new concept, essentially a key, key new concept. Um, so before we get to this key new concept, which you might be wondering what it is, we're going to just sort of revisit where we left off a couple videos ago. We were building this example. We had a bouncing ball around the screen. We've changed it. Instead of a bouncing ball, it's called a mover object. Uh, because when you make arrays of ball objects, you start saying balls all the time and people start snickering. <laughs> but anyway, that's not your problem, that's my problem. But I've gotten past it and we now have a mover object. And I, I changed a few things, I'm going to run this sketch. Um, and you can see instead of bouncing off the edge, it's uh, when it gets to the bottom, it goes to the top, when it gets to the right, it goes to the left. It's minor details. So what's important about this? Okay, so if you recall, if we look at the class, we can see here that we have an object with two vectors. Location describes where it is. Velocity describes the change in location over time. And what do we do? In the update function, we add velocity to location. And down further below, we have a display function where we draw the object at that location. That is our model here. That is our model. But we, at this moment, are going to uh, change this model. You know, so, okay, so let's just say, you look at this and you think, Really? I'm watching all these videos for hours and hours and hours, and all there is is a circle that's kind of moving across the screen? Aye. Well, uh, so sorry, I just got off on that tangent there. What is it, what would, you, what would your next instinct be? Your next instinct might be, I know I'm going to change velocity, and I'm going to change location, and I'll make location do something different. I'll say location x equals this, or velocity x equals this, and I'll make it random and do all sorts of stuff. No, <laughs> this is not the purpose of this video at my recording, I'm recording, I don't have to restart this one. This is not the purpose here. We're going to make, we're, as an exercise to ourselves, we are going to limit what we can do. And we are going to say from this moment on, not forever and ever, because I'm sure you, the point is to break all these rules here, we are going to say we are not going to mess with velocity, we're not going to mess with location. These are just, these variables are going to exist in the state that they are. Velocity goes into location, but we are instead going to add a new vector. So let's try to, uh, let's get, uh, this makes me feel weird. I keep looking back and forth. Let's go over to the whiteboard. So, okay, so if we were to rewrite that function, just so we remember, we have it over here, we have this update method. Ugh. Right, we have an object. It has a location vector. It has a velocity vector. I didn't really, I don't know. Whatever. I'm going, <laughs> I already re-recorded this. I'm doing it worse this time, but I don't care. I'll do it again tomorrow. Again and again, forever and ever. We have an update method. God, it's very late in the day. I, I have this rule to record these videos in the morning when I feel sort of my brain is working and I feel energized. But... Stuff's got to get done. Stuff's got to happen. OK, we have an update method. What do we do in that update method? We add velocity to location. What's going on here? We have a processing window. We have an object that has a position vector. It has an x and a y. We're drawing it there as a circle. That's the location vector. Maybe it has a velocity, which says that we add velocity to location, so now it's over here. We add velocity to location, so now it's over here. We add velocity to location, so now it's over here. Great. So here's the thing. Location changes over time by velocity. We want velocity to change. Our instinct might be, and this is what I was getting to before, and I couldn't just make it happen all at once. I might say velocity.x equals a random amount. Velocity.y equals a random amount. Or maybe velocity.x minus equals Point one, and I try to like figure out some way to change those variables. But no, we need to do this in a much more formal way. What we need is to say, we need to add another vector to this mover object. That other vector we're going to add is a vector that we are going to call acceleration. And just as location changes by velocity over time, velocity is going to change by acceleration over time. And this makes a lot of sense if you think about it, right? If you're driving a car and you think of pressing on the gas, you're accelerating that car. Pressing on the brake, you're decelerating the car. But this analogy only takes us so far because 
you know, you're thinking of speeding up and slowing down. What really is important to realize is that acceleration is any change in velocity. We could be changing the magnitude of our velocity or the direction of our velocity. A turn, a speeding up, a slowing down. It is a vector that adjusts velocity over time. So, um, so this, is, this is the exercise we have to ourselves. This is our physics engine here. This is our methodology. Acceleration changes velocity. Velocity changes location. We don't ever set velocity to anything directly. We don't ever set location to anything directly. We now need an algorithm for acceleration. We need to figure out what should acceleration be. And so what I want to do in the rest of this video is add this stuff to our example and then look at a couple scenarios for what might some algorithms might be for computing and acceleration and see what types of effects we get. OK, I feel good about this. Had a little problem there for a second, but we're moving on. We're at five and a half minutes or so, and so far we're good. OK, so here we are over here <laughs> again, and let's look at our class. So we know we need to add to our object an acceleration. We know that we need to give that acceleration an initial value, and just to simplify things, also, let's give the velocity. So velocity and acceleration both start at 0. Let's run this sketch again. And what do we get? A circle that doesn't move all this time. And it's just a circle in the center of the screen. It's like, it's a nice, very happy circle, though. There's nothing, nothing to say that you have to move. Actually, moving is very good for you. And that's this standing thing, I think, actually, is, anyway, never mind. OK. These are pixels. Who cares? OK. Um, so, but we do need to add this other line of code, velocity.add acceleration. So now our physics engine is at work. Acceleration goes into velocity. Velocity goes into location. OK. So now we need an algorithm for computing acceleration. And I wrote down a couple possibilities over there. There's another whiteboard that you can't see. <laughs> I wrote down some possibilities. I hope the cameras don't shut off. They're not going to. Everything's going to be fine. Um, so uh, two, th th there's three that we're going to do here. One is we're going to look at a constant acceleration. Great. We could probably figure that out pretty quickly. We're going to look at a random acceleration. Um, and then we're also going to look at acceleration towards the mouse, although I think I may just say that for the next video and have the entire video look at how you might have a dynamic acceleration that is a vector always pointing towards the mouse, which is kind of an interesting prospect if you think about it. OK, so let's first look at constant acceleration. Well, in fact, this is a constant acceleration. The acceleration is 0. But let's give it a quantity. I don't know what makes sense. Let's have it accelerate along the x. I don't know, 5 comma 0. That sounds good, right? Whoa, OK, so quickly out of control, and I don't know what it's doing now. So something we have to realize here is that we <laughs> are living in a world of pixels. I mean, uh, we're, we're, we're not, let me rephrase that. This is a world of pixels. We live in a physical world where we talk to each other and we shake hands and we hug and we say hi and we eat food. I don't know, do things. It's late. I'm getting a little tired. Ignore me. This is pixels. The point of what I'm saying is five pixels per frame of acceleration is kind of insane. Remember, we're adding that acceleration to velocity every frame. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. 30, French, 30 times per second, 60 times per second. We're going to be moving 120 pixels in, per frame in a couple seconds. That's insane. So I went off on a tangent. But the point is, when we're looking at acceleration values, we need to think of small quantities. We're going to have to be tuning our physics engines appropriately to pixels. And acceleration, in this case, makes sense with small numbers. So 0.01, let's see, and we have our it's moving along. It's getting faster and faster. Look at it go. It's speeding up. It's getting faster, right? You can see this is constant acceleration. The object speed, we can see, is getting faster and faster every frame as acceleration accumulates into velocity. Again, you might be wondering, after all this time, it's just a circle moving across the screen, and it's just getting faster? I know. But these are the building blocks, and, and you will obviously be more creative than this. OK, but let's look at this for a second and, and understand that acceleration doesn't just affect the speed of something. We're noticing that because of the, the velocity is being starting at 0. But let's say I have the velocity actually start moving downwards at a rate of 2 pixels per frame. Look at what's happening to that. It's accelerating to the right. It's almost as if there's a wind force pushing it to the right. It started moving down, but it's accelerating further and further to the right. So this is really what's key here. If you ever dreamt <laughs> about programming smooth, organic, flowing motion of all different types of things, then what you needed is to, to, to have a location, velocity, and acceleration. And you need to calculate that acceleration. So this, you can see it's speeding up faster and faster. This is just still a constant acceleration. 
the world is going to get much more interesting when we don't have a constant acceleration, when acceleration changes over time based on any number of factors. The simplest way I can think to demonstrate to you that to you right now would be let's give it a random acceleration. So let's look at that. So first, let me stop that sketch. Let me put acceleration back to velocity back to zero, acceleration back to zero. And now in the update method, we're actually going to compute an acceleration. Acceleration. And you might think, OK, I'm going to make a new p vector, and I'm going to give it some random amounts, blah, blah, blah. So that's all well and good. But one thing I should mention about the vector class is that the vector class actually has a function built into it, which will give you a random unit vector. This is incredibly valuable. It gives you a vector of length 1 at any direction. That way, anytime you want, boom, random direction, you got one, and you can scale it because it's a normalized unit vector. You can scale it very easily. So let's look at how we would do that. We say p vector dot random uh, 2d. Now, notice that we have to specify 2d here. This is one of the times where we want to make sure we don't get a random 3d vector, because if we get the z component, we could potentially have the x and y component at 0. Anyway, we want a unit vector that's in two dimensions. It's just x and y. So if I run this, let's take a look at what happens. We can see, look at it. It's kind of accelerating randomly. It's actually getting out of control really fast. So again. <laughs> This is a kind of where I, I need to bring something up again with you guys. This is not physics in any real way. This is, there's no world of things and grab forces and electrons and antimatter and the sun that's going to explode in 100 million years and there's evolution. This, this is not the real world. This is pixels on the screen, OK? So that most of the time, we are just trying to create the feeling of something realistic, then actually perfectly simulating the realism in some uber amazing scientific way. And so one of the things that we'll often do is kind of hack. You might call it a cheat, but I should method. I, I totally do not allow the word, word cheating when it comes to programming this stuff, because it's all cheating. There is no cheating or not cheating. None of this is real, right? There is no, this is just a wall, by the way. The wall is green. There, there's nothing here. I can't get past it. But anyway, the screen is over here, whatever. Uh, but, but all of that says that one thing that's often useful to do is say something like velocity.limit5. What that limit function does is it says, you know what, I'm going to introduce an artificial constraint over this program. The velocity can never be, have a magnitude greater than 5. If it, if it ever has a magnitude greater than 5, shrink it down to 5. If it's less than 5, it's fine. So that's what that limit function done, does, which can actually be pretty darn valuable. So you see here, actually here we go, we have this kind of nervous, jittery, moving thing. Um, and we've created it only by affecting the object's acceleration. So we could, we could now scale that. We could make it more jittery, less jittery. The point of this is that this is your exercise. This is your job right now. Using this foundation and the example, I'll link to it below if you're watching this on Vimeo or through another whatever, wherever I put these, I'm going to link to the example below that has this basic model. Try to create, see if you how much personality you can put into the motion of something just by drawing a simple shape and only by affecting its acceleration. If you're stuck for an idea, see if you can make it dynamic, like it's always following the mouse. What if it accelerates towards the mouse? And that's what we're going to look at in, in the next video. Another couple ideas is what happens if you use Perlin noise, what happens if you use I'm recording this, right? What happens if you use Gaussian uh, distribution of acceleration values? There's, there's any number of possibilities. Just make something up. Try. But whatever you do, just only change. I'm going to just highlight this right here. Only work with this part of the code. See how far you can get just by messing with acceleration. OK, so in the next video, we're going to look at accelerating towards the mouse. We're kind of That's an exercise. You can either just go right ahead, or you can try it and then look at the video, which will provide the answer. Um, and the exciting thing about all of this is that we're going to see soon how acceleration is the key to fulfilling <laughs> Newton's laws of motion. I don't know if that makes sense. But it's, uh, it's getting late, and I think I'll probably take a break and do some more of this tomorrow morning. You don't need to know that. Somebody edit this, right? Did I say this already? Could somebody just download all these videos and edit them and like airbrush me or something to make it look better or replace me with a puppet of a dinosaur or something? I don't know. You guys are good at this computer stuff. OK, I got to find the button to stop recording. This time I was recording. Uh, OK.